Hello everyone, I am Kalia Vlivyaki and I am your design journey art class expert for drawing with watercolors and inks while creating paintings that are inspired by nature and all the beauty around us. Moving on to this session, we're going to dive into something a little bit more different. My love for tattoo designs has always inspired my work, so today I'm gonna show you the basics of old school tattoos and it is perfect because of its simple designing and also really easy coloring techniques, but in the end you actually achieve a really cool looking piece of art. Let's get started so I can show you how you can easily blend watercolor pens and also create clean line work. The materials we're going to use are the pigment liners from the Stadler Design Journey assortment that you can find in various nib widths according to the level of detail you want to achieve. For the line work and because they are waterproof and very fitting to be used with our next material, the double-ended watercolor brass pens for all the coloring of this session. Of course, to follow up all the exercises and prepare our sketches, we're going to use a pencil, an eraser and sharpener and this set has everything you will ever need. While also a ruler for any symmetrical planning and this brass set to blend our colors. The paper I'm using is A5 size 300 GSM cold pressed watercolor paper. First things we have to get straight is how you can use the materials. Starting off with the pigment liners, even though they are pretty self-explanatory and straightforward, it's nice to mention that when you want to create clean line works, you have to take your time with the lines. Don't rush them or do too many unnecessary wrist movements. We don't want a sketchy look, we want a strong one line look. So let's say we have these two squares. As you can see, I am simply trying to trace the line as clean as possible. Especially the old school style of tattooing is very well known for its bold and clean outlines. So be determined and take it slow and you will do great. Now we have our Stadler watercolor pens and these are super versatile since as the name suggests they have watercolor pigments, meaning you can blend or mix them with water. The double-ended sides gives you both a fine tip option or a wider brass felted pen for more painting control. You can of course use these as they are straight away to cover an area more like a colored pen. But when it comes to blending and creating shadows or mixing two colors, you can start by layering the same color to create a darker tone or even a gradient opaque result. Then you can grab your brush and water and using the watercolor ability to spread and control the color even more. or even creating beautiful watercolor textures. For blending colors together to create gradients, we have to have, for example, 
both of the colors ready in our hands because we have to be a bit quick in order for the color not to dry. Starting off with the lighter, doing some brush strokes and then going on top of it with a darker one in all the areas we want to add shadows. And then again with the lighter and changing between them to create the perfect fade. And then of course we can also use water on the lighter end for even bigger shadow scale. Back to the old school style, the blending technique we are going to use is basically the same throughout the whole session. Every time it usually involves two colors, one for the desired color and one to add shadows. So let's say we have these leaves right here, I'm going to need a green and then a darker green or brown. I don't really use black for shadows because it is too intense. And you start by coloring in the main colors and then layering it because this may actually be enough for the shadow part. But if it's not then you can go and add your dark brown. And in case number 2 we can also use water to create the gradient. So yeah, it is basically truly all about creating gradients. So as you can see from my leaves, I have a darker corner going into a really bright and nice light color in the pointy part. Now that you know everything about your materials and how to use them, you are ready to start your journey challenge and it may seem complex, but trust me if you follow the steps, I think you're going to have so much fun creating this and coloring it and it is also one of my favorite animals. In this journey challenge we will create an old school tattoo style owl. I'm using our symmetry ruler to start creating a grid to help us create our sketch easily while mirroring everything we do on the right side to the left side. I am placing it in the center of the paper high up, marking the center and then 2cm to the right and then another 4.5 going in total to 6.5cm and doing exactly the same on the left side. Now for our horizontal grid lines, I'm counting 2 cm from our top mark down and then another 4 cm, then 1 cm, then 1.5 and, and lastly 1.5. Now all I have to do is create all the lines to complete our guide. On the first top line, the middle two boxes will be the head. The next two going down will be the center of the body and the last three will be the tail. Each one representing a wing row going bigger each time. Then moving to the upper wings, the main guideline will be a curve going from the top left corner to the middle of the owl body. Same again for the right side too. This is the space where we will fill it all with wings and details. I made three rows of wings going again from the smaller to bigger ones. To complete the sketch I added leaves and sun rays around the design to create a complementary background 
really all time classic elements you will find in any old school tattoo design. Next step is to create a clean line work over everything we did with our pencil but now with our pigment liners. The Stadler pigment liners are super great since they will create a waterproof drawing and we will not have to worry about smudging when we will move on to coloring. Starting on the coloring, I decided to do the leaves first since they are pretty simple and they can work as a warm up on our technique and overall vision for our final drawing. I am using two colors, a green and a yellow ochre, and changing between them to create the perfect blend. In other cases, like this little leaf beside it, I will use the water with a brush to spread and create a gradient with the color I placed with the marker. I repeated everything, all the same technique on all the leaves. Moving on to the wings, it's again the same base technique, first placing the color with my marker and then using a wet brush to spread it. As you can see, with only one color and water, you can create so many values. I make the inner part of the wings darker to create depth. For the body I chose a deep orange color, all very vibrant but also earthy tone looking to represent the old school tattoo style. Did the same for the wings and the head. So if you look closely, the whole technique is about placing the color with a marker and then easily spreading it with a wet brush, leaving a small part of the end wide for contrast and clarity. Finishing off with the sun rays and our cool looking art piece is ready.
As always, I really hope you had fun and I cannot wait to see your creations. So make sure to share them with me on Instagram under the hashtag my design journey. Thank you so, so much for being here and following this design journey that it is truly all about finding inspiration in nature and just going out there, exploring and being creative.